So I actually have the boring version of this rifle, but this one is maybe prettier. This is a Arabesque RX Helix from Merkel. So actually with this one, I am going to start at the front. The particular barrel on this one is an open sighted threaded barrel. So that thread comes off, that sight comes out and you can put a silencer on there if you like, but if you want to keep the open sights, you can. The barrel on a Helix is unimportant because they're interchangeable. And uh, if you want to see that, we've done another Helix video. Go and check that out. There is actually two technical ones, one a full strip down and one just a basic Helix review on the channel. Go and check them out if you want to know more about the technical aspects of this gun. So barrels aside, what do you get on an Arabesque Merkel Helix? Well, the Arabesque is all about two things, the action and the woodwork. So as much as you can get pretty much any custom grade woodwork on a Helix, these guys come in this grade. Uh, I believe they call it a grade four, which is quite Pretty, it's, it's actually quite pretty. It's certainly nice and individual. Uh, certainly sometimes with the higher grade pieces of wood on the helixes, they can be susceptible to tiny micro cracks around the headwork. But again, who is actually gonna take a grade 10 or 11 helix and abuse and break it? Not that many people. So I think actually at this grade, this is an extremely practical grade of wood as well as being beautiful. The other thing about it is that it is finished very, very nicely. It is a oil finish, but a gloss thick oil finish, more of a true oil finish. And from experience, they don't actually mark badly at all. So a lot of shiny gloss finishes mark, and you can see them from several miles away. These don't, they are a good working finish for a gloss finish at least. They will wear if you take them out and use them and put them in the rain because that's what oil finishes and all finishes do. So you do need to keep on top of this with a little bit of wax just to keep it protected and try not to beat it about. Hey, look at that, we're actually at the back of the gun. Um, let's start at the back again. This is a micro cell pad. I don't actually like these pads a lot. And it's the only thing about heat Merkel that I don't really understand is why they chose this pad over any other. They are tough and they are very good at reducing recoil and they are very simple to fit and they do look all right. But they are also not a high-end or luxury pad. And I know that that is not that important. Um, and that there are more important things to worry about. But given this gun is in that sort of five grand mark, I would have liked to see, I don't know, I always skip to a pack my being sort of the market, the industry leader of quality pad work, but maybe just something a little bit more luxurious, perhaps even a Merkel branded pad, that would be quite smart. However, this pad only comes on their DS stock models, their DS stock being the ladies, or semi Monte Carlo stock, not a lady stock, they're not really that much shorter at all, the Monte Carlo-esque stock. So it is there purely just based on reducing recoil and they are very good for that. That's enough talking about the pad. You have sling swivels fitted fore and aft. As I previously said, the stock is Monte Carlo and you have a raised right hand cheek piece. Merkel have not seen fit yet to make a left handed action, although they do make a left handed stock, I believe, by a special order for the right million pounds. Um, not that that's a problem. But again, this isn't really a gun designed for left-handers and they have no intention of making them for them. Unfortunately, I should say. The checkering is in a quite unique design. I quite like it, the sort of the sort of wavy, scrolly thing that is there. It is nice, it feels good in the hand, it is quite coarse, it is sharp, it is actually altogether quite a nice thing. I almost thought for a second there it was hand finished, but actually it's just a really nicely put together checkering by laser really like that uh feels great looks great the grips on these are quite a full grip they have a huge cut out for your thumb as well and that is probably one of the more comfortable grips of any rifle ever it is pretty much upright by the time you get your hand in place and i am a fan what would be just nice would be a tiny bit of right hand palm swell but you can't have everything on the bottom is this beautiful black grip cap the middle or section being interchangeable for others uh, if you felt the need to upgrade or put something custom in there, or uh, you can just get an oval to replace that blank one that you could have engraved personally. That would be quite naughty, wouldn't it? The bolt handle is also wooden. Lovely feature and something that I have seen a few people do and take that wooden bolt handle and just put it on a standard rifle, just because, again, you can, and it's, it's actually just a little bit more tactile than the non-wooden one. Continue on the wood, you have the same theme 
of checkering across the course of these diamonds. And what's quite smart is you have the tight checkering at the side, the coarse checkering in the middle, and the tight checkering at the sides again. So you get the best of both worlds in terms of refinements and not. And that goes at the back as well, it's quite pleasant. You have your sling swivel there at the front, as I said, and your little fore and release button too. And as with all Helixes, the wood metal fit is completely uniform, although it does overspill. But these guns are designed for using. Well, simple as that. You're not going to buy something like this as a, a refined gun, although it is refined. They are designed as a working tool, and that's the whole point of the Helix action is it's a driven ball gun, the ultimate straight pull, if you like. Um, or at least it's up there in terms of straight pull speed. It's probably the fastest straight pull of them all. I'd love to do a test on that one day. Uh, if all straight pull makers would send all their guns to one place uh, for a unbiased speed test, that would be cool, wouldn't it? But it is, um, and as much as I have talked about the action of the RX Helix before, I'll talk about it again. You have, in the bottom, a three-shot magazine as standard in the Arabesque. Merkel UK, at least, are quite good in the fact that you could probably get that upgraded for a five when you buy it, if you wanted a five, as opposed to having to buy one as well. But if you need a five-shot, you probably also need a three-shot on the side. The Merkel Action, and this is what I really like, is how fast it is. They're not designed, however, for using lightly. You do need to get hold of that bolt and go for it. The geared action is particularly smart, very quick, but as I said, needs to be commanded it's not designed for particularly slow use and if it is suddenly it does feel a little clunkily because unsurprisingly a completely geared action would feel a little bit clunky if you use it slowly it's just the way it is it's designed to be used i do quite like it the cool part about the action as well is it takes all the way from triple two all the way up to 9.3 by 62 so you can have any caliber you like in there but what is special about this one is it is the arabesque action and this is what makes this gun the arabesque is the mixture of the wood and the action the alloy action itself doesn't usually lend itself to engraving on any standard, so they have kept it quite simple, which I am in two minds of. So it is a silver action in a matte finish with inked background on light hand-finished scroll, scroll, scroll engraving that's kind of done in patches across the course of the gun. So although Merkel don't actually state how this gun is engraved, I can see it as a mixture of hand and machine so my guess, like with a lot of hand-finished guns now, it will be laser engraved on top of the aluminium alloy and then chased out by hand. And you can kind of see that uh, in all these little flare cuts and additions, you can see chatter marks and slight imperfections. However, there's enough decent computers out there nowadays that can make it look very much like a hand engraved gun. But there's just the odd flaw here that just makes me feel like it is indeed hand-finished. Um, properly and I've seen a few of these now and there's a couple of different specs of arabesque as well out there um, and each one does have slight imperfections so that'll be my guess um, and the fact is it makes it very difficult because the coating they put on top and the finish they put on top of this actually would rough any edges over that would actually smooth over and kind of hide any of the handiwork but my best guess is it's indeed hand finished because well that's what I guess I'd like to think it is I really like it uh, my issue with this gun is that I really very much prefer the black action with the grade 4 wood. I just think that looks a lot more sleek. Although I really like the whole juxtapositions between the black and the silver and the wood on this gun, I actually think that's nice. I was always a fan of the old stainless man liquor that came in the wooden stock. I always thought that looked like a beautiful, beautiful bit of kit. There's something about the engraving on this gun that just is neither enough nor too much. And I'm not sure whether that's just me or whether some of you agree, because I don't think it's unattractive in any way. I just feel like what they could have done is taken that amount of engraving and put it on a different amount of space or put it in slightly different areas. Or perhaps maybe they should have just left the side panels or the borders or something. There's just something about the engraving that doesn't tickle me as it should. However, I am also aware that engraving is a hugely personal preference thing. And I'm, someone out there will think that this is absolutely lovely. But if it was me, I would have rather taken maybe the same amount of engraving and condensed it onto a smaller area and had a patch of this beautiful acanthus scroll or maybe just designed it a little better. But it just, there's something about it that just, I don't know, I feel like it complements the wood very well and complements the lines of the guns very well. So, so the design itself is extremely competent. It's nice, it works. Like for example, this bit on the top here is absolutely stunning. And these little bits at the front of the action are absolutely perfect and work. There you go, I, 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 I don't know. It's not an easy task, is it? To lightly engrave a gun. I think everybody either wants it really done or not done at all. 
and at least there's some hand finishing done here and I love the, the border and everything and it looks great and it sort of like I said complements the black and silver of the rest of the gun but I don't know there you go that's just me I'm it confuses me um, and I'm not entirely sure how I feel about the engraving that's that's the bottom line I really like so they do the um the wild boar, not the wild boar limited edition that we looked at last year, but a, a wild boar uh, version uh, in a similar sort of price bracket to this, say just under five grand. And it is very, very nice. And I kind of prefer that because again, it's, it's a more dense patch. Not that I think this is ugly. There you go. I'm in a state of mild confusion, but it doesn't really matter. It happens all the time. So I'm sure you've noticed. I do like it but I think I prefer the, the black action. And I think maybe if they just blacked this action instead of had it silver, so the limited engraving was just made that a little bit more subtle. I'd love to know your thoughts on it. Again, I really like it, but there is something about it that just maybe doesn't chime in my head as how I would have done it. Not that I'm allowed to engrave because we all know that that is a mistake after the last two attempts. Guys, thank you very much for watching. Take care and Hopefully keep your eyes peeled. I will take my Helix out and give my honest review after one year of use. And if you've enjoyed this video, don't forget to subscribe. And if you enjoyed a few of our videos, perhaps go and become a member to help us make more amazing content and perhaps influence how we make it. Guys, take care. Goodbye. And we'll see you soon.